Hi and welcome again to The Winning Factor. I'm Alan Aitken and on this show each week we try to look at a couple of upcoming races, identify a particular ingredient of the race that we might look back on later as having been decisive. Well, Sunday at Sha Tin and the first race we're going to take a look at here is race six, our winning factor, the start. Now I think there'll be cases made here for a number of runners. Uh, win Win 33 will have his fans. Uh, likewise, circuit number one from the reinvigorated Tony Cruz yard. And Momentum Happy after his first time out win for Jimmy Ting last start. But the real focus in the betting here I think will be on Zach Purton's ride, Party Genius. And So We Joy from the John Moore yard. And they're the two runners that I want to have the closest look at. And first of all, we're going to see what they've been up to. And uh, firstly, uh, Party Genius. This is race 629. And uh, this is, in fact, the race that uh, Momentum Lucky won. And Party Genius runs fourth here. You'll see him beginning out wide in the red and white colours. And uh, Zach Purton gets him across and into a trailing position. Uh, the speed fairly even in this race and the leader was able to get a break on them and then stave off any finishes. But I thought Pat, Party Genius uh, raced very well here. Uh, he's a three-year-old with some upside and he cuts back the margin here but has to settle for fourth placing. Then in race 680, which was just seven days ago, uh, the four-year-old, so we joy, he's in the pink colours. He's another, he's only lightly raced and made a good impression. And he's a touch slow away here, but you see that issue is then compounded by him getting a check and he ends up a fair way back early. He chases up to be midfield uh, with a little bit of cover wide. Uh, and then we see him uh, sprint home. Uh, the leaders really didn't put a lot of pressure on here. They dashed from the 800 metres and uh, he was able to make up some ground behind Armistar, but uh, not a lot of ground the way the race was run. Now, with the seven-day backup, uh, So We Joy falls under the heading of uh, quick backup horses from the John Moore Yard, an angle which I highlighted as being a positive a few weeks ago. But I think there's a more important factor at work here, and uh, what we're going to show you now is the last three starts for each of these horses and how they jumped. Now, at the top of the screen, you see Party Genius in those red and white colours, and you see every time he races, he's had wide draws all the way through, and he's one of the first horses out of the gates every time and then has to surrender ground as horses push up under him. Whereas uh, So We Joy, um, he did jump okay on the dirt in the middle run here, but uh, the other two, he's been a little bit scrappy at the start and uh, that has given him a bit more to do than probably would be ideal. And while the check that he got last week certainly wasn't his fault, you do find that with horses that are a touch slowly away that they can get a bump uh, when that happens and that puts them further on the back foot. And when we look at the map, uh, that start is going to be a crucial aspect to the race. And we take a look at the map here, I think that from a better draw, Party Genius in gate six, his fast jump can be used to advantage. And so we joy, he's drawn outside him anyway. And with those iffy starts that he has, looks more than likely to be conceding a start to his rival. So the tip in race six, party genius. His winning factor, the start. I don't think there's a great deal between them in terms of ability, these two horses, but the fact that party genius is able to bounce out of the gates and use his better draw this time, I think is gonna be the key to making him the preferred pick in the race. The other race I want to examine this week is race seven and our winning factor here, the map. Now this is a class four, middle distance, 2,000 metres, and the inform Gala Knight is notionally the top weight here, but he gets a claim for the new apprentice, Jerry Chow. And down in the handicaps, I think there are good chances for good days. He looks near a win. Victoria Seeker coming off an impressive class five win, and McMunigal also has some good consistent recent form. But first I want to take a little detour here because uh, we do have a new 10 pound claimer, Jerry Chow. And uh, I thought uh, we might take a look at uh, the difference between the perception of the claiming riders and perhaps uh, how they actually perform in races. Now I have to confess up front, before I did any research for this, uh, I was 
pretty much uh, anti-apprentice claims. I think uh, as a punter, you tend to get half the ride and half the odds uh, when a good senior jockey is replaced by a junior claimer. But I thought uh, it would be fairer to uh, dive into the stats, at least uh, a little bit. And uh, you see here, uh, these are the results for apprentice claims since September of 2014. And uh, the uh, claims that I've used here are less than three pounds because that's when they're still apprentices. And contrasted that with all the other rides during the same period. So anyone who was not claiming uh, three or more than three pounds. Now in terms of expected wins, the apprentices do a better job than I thought. Perhaps that's because they often surprise on long priced winners early in their careers. But strike rates on the other hand, only show an edge with the 10 pound claim, but not as the claim reduces. And the £10 claim on Gala Night is going to be a talking point of this race, uh, no doubt. If we have a look at how he's been going, uh, this is race 612 now. Uh, he's a three-year-old, he's still got some upside to him, but as a result of his recent form, he's won three of his last five starts, uh, Gala Night, but remains in Class 4. And if you take that claim into account, uh, the middle of Class 4. Now, this was a tough victory at Happy Valley, over 2,200 metres. Bullish Glory looked to have him in the final stages, and he fought back under 130 pounds to win. While another serious rival on Sunday, uh, good days, you'll see he comes charging late into fourth placing. Now, just half an hour uh, later, uh, I thought Gala Knight's main danger ran on the same night, and Victoria Seeker here is in uh, purple, uh, pinky kind of colours. And uh, Joe Moreira gives him a great ride here, uh, gets back in the field behind a uh, decent speed and swoops on them to uh, put up an impressive win that he had actually been promising for some time in Class 5, also under 133 pounds, so he gets a big weight drop on Sunday. But when we look at Sunday's race and the draw from the tricky 2,000 metre point where there's only a short run uh, to the first turn, I do think that the map here is going to highlight the prospects of horses like Good Days and Gala Knight who have drawn in over those of horses like Victoria Seeker and McMunigal who have the wide barriers. Now for me the question of whether Jerry Chow's weight allowance counts here is tied into the decisions he needs to make in the race and you can see uh, he may lead or let Giant Turtle lead him here but he looks to have a pretty uncomplicated race ahead of him. So the tip in race seven, Gala Knight. His winning factor, the map. Now I know plenty of people analyzing the form here will see the 10 pound claim as a crucial element of Gala Knight's chances. But for me, the important thing is whether it's a difficult navigation for the junior rider or it's pretty straightforward. And I think you saw on the map there, it's pretty straightforward and that gives him the edge. Well, that's it from the winning factor for this week. Good luck on Sunday. We'll see you next time.